Hi hey everyone and welcome to Legal Limelight. Today we have Gordy, Gordana, Michalaki, and I'm really excited to chat. I just had to reset this because someone accidentally tried to crash. <laughs> All right, so let's give it a second try. Hey guys, thanks for coming back up here. Round two. Okay, Gordy, I just added you back up. Hi. Hi, can you see me? I can see you. Someone like tried to crash and I accepted accidentally. So oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully people will come back in. All right. Amazing, how are you? Good, thank you, how are you doing? Oh, I'm trying different like fun filters, don't want to be <laughs> okay. Don't want to mess up what we got going on here. Oh, Instagram. Oh, Instagram. It's nice to meet you. Thank in you. Likewise. Virtual mm -hmm. world. Nice. nice to meet you, too. Yeah, I have my big window. I'm trying to, like, cut that out. <laughs> I don't have any windows in here. I was going to take it in the conference room, but we have a new client meeting. So we're rolling with it. <laughs> I meant, sorry, I meant mirror. But yeah, no, you look great. It's, um, it's Thank nice you. to, Likewise. I don't even know what to say anymore. Like, meet you virtually yeah. yeah nice to meet you too i've been following you for a while in your journey and i'm super motivated by all your posts and love your page and all your content thank you so much yeah that's kind of like why i created this space every thursday is one to meet with people because i was having these conversations offline at first on zoom and then i figured you know what the rest of the community needs to hear what other people have to say because we were having really great conversations so i want to give a proper introduction of you um i'm usually at my desk so i'm sorry i'm going to be looking down but your bio is like so impressive and i love it so i'm going to read i'm going to read it <laughs> thank you so much gordana aka gordy mikalaki is the boss she's the <laughs> elm law group's partner and founder and she has a stellar background she doesn't usually brag about it, but people like me are allowed to. And really cool fun fact, she worked on the ninth floor of the Arizona's executive tower, ahem, the Arizona's governor, governor's office under Napolitano, the Arizona Court of Appeals, and she was the assistant GC, assistant attorney general, apologies, under three different attorney generals all by the age of 33. Yes, you are the boss, Gordy. Thank you so much. I, I Thank you. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you are doing right now. What are you practicing? And what? Are, tell us a little bit about your practice. So I am a personal injury attorney. I am the partner and the founder of my firm, Elm Law Group, which I founded in 2019. So we're coming up on our third year anniversary. And I've been practicing for about 14 years. So about eight of those years have been in personal injury. And like you had said, I was an assistant attorney general for the state. I was prosecuting cases involving children and families. And then I had an opportunity to jump into the private practice and found a personal injury firm. And I did that. And that was really rewarding. And I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. But I felt like it was a nice opportunity to still protect an underdog as I was doing for the state as a prosecutor. And once I had learned everything about personal injury and being a business owner from the ground up, I thought I could do this on my own. I can start my own firm. There's not a lot of, you know, female personal injury attorneys out there, especially in our Phoenix market. So I saw an opportunity to found my own firm, partner my own firm, and we're going strong. So it's so amazing. So did you discover that you were an entrepreneur and you loved being an entrepreneur through this process? Yes. So I, I actually grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. So my grandparents, my parents, you know, we we're all, they're all hustlers. I mean, big time. So they own hotels and restaurants and apartments and all kinds of different businesses. And we grew up working alongside of them. And so we really learned what it meant to have your own business, what that responsibility meant, what the rewards were, what the risks were, all of that. And so even from a young age, I knew that I wanted to do something um, in terms of being an entrepreneur, but I also knew I wanted to be an attorney. So it was just kind of 
like perfect mix. A matter of time before I founded my own firm. Yeah. How big is the firm now? So we have a few paralegals, legal secretaries, and receptionists, and we're growing. Um, some of it's virtual, some of it's in office. And so that's a nice hybrid for people who still want to have a face-to-face -face conversation. We're located in the heart of Phoenix. So if someone wants to meet us on Zoom, great. If someone doesn't want to meet or wants to even meet in person, we're amicable to that. So we offer whatever the client wants and needs, we're willing to accommodate, so. And so if anyone doesn't already follow Gordy, I think you can click on the little arrow at the top and follow. Or if you're watching the recording, her account is Lawyer Gordy. Tell us about your videos. I'm obsessed with them. I think that they're really powerful and talking videos are hard to do. Like a lot of people take that for granted, but tell us like a little bit about your journey and your experience with using video. Thank you so much. So video is king. I mean, yeah. being an attorney and getting licensed almost 14 years ago, never thought that I would have to market myself in that way, but with Instagram and TikTok and all these social media platforms, people want to see what you know before they pick up the phone and call you. And so video is something new that I've delved into or dived into this year. And it's such a creative process because I write my own content, my own scripts. Um, you try to make it as interesting as possible to people who might not know anything about this area of law, might not need you in this instance. Um, but I always try to make it fun, throw a prop in there, maybe like a little bit of a dirty joke that people <laughs> might like read between the lines and be like, oh, okay, she's kind of funny. Like, I want to work with her. So that's, that's the video. So because, you know, you are, you run your firm, you're the a traditional type attorney. There's nothing that's really, um, abnormal about it but what about the new environment the new social media and reels have you experienced any um have you experienced any like pushback or anything while creating an online presence and still being you know uh, a, a badass law partner and running a business I mean, I haven't really experienced any negativity that I could really, you know, put my finger on. So far, everyone's been really supportive. If it's people that are in this area of law or lawyers themselves, you know, we encourage each other, we'll like each other's posts, comment, try to like build a following and all of that for one another. Um, but even like clients, you know, people will call yeah. and they'll be like, yeah, I just saw your TikTok video. And so, uh, you know, I was in an accident and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this actually really is a source of business, which is mind boggling to think. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're there. We've been there. The entrepreneurs have figured this out five, six years ago or plus. Um, but it's exciting to see more lawyers use it. And, you know, not just solo practitioners or, um, you know, lawyers who are doing more subscription model. This is really a tool that every single attorney, I don't care if you're a big, lo big law attorney or whatever attorney using social media and video to communicate to clients and potential clients is, is key. Do you agree with that? I do. I really do. And I have even considered talking about the steps of a personal injury case and explaining it in the form of a, vi a video and sending it to our clients. So that way they're getting information in all different forms. You know, we already do the written form. We all already do the speaking form. Why not a video form? Something they can revisit over and over again and say, I'm at this stage of my personal injury case. You know, what do I need to do or what should I know? So I think that would be helpful. It will. And the way that you do your videos, they're very professional. I, I love them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Likewise, I love all your content, all your reels. I mean, you're, you're on it. <laughs> it's hard. I mean... So, and mine has evolved. What, what's your procedure? Do you batch record? Or do you record periodically? So we'll do 10 videos a month is what we're doing right now. And we'll just do them all in one sitting. And it'll probably take us anywhere from two to three. I mean, on the higher end, it has maybe taken us four hours, but now we're more efficient. Outfit changes go super fast. So it's just like, boom, boom, you knock them out really quickly. 
as the biggest component I think for me is just trying to come up with the content, you know, like what do people care about? What do people want to hear about how to make like something boring in the law books, interesting and come to life and make it basic so people can understand it and remember it. And so I'll run ideas past, you know, my staff, my kids, my family, whoever. And I'm just like, what do you think about this? Or what should I do? Or give me an idea. And they're like, parking lot accidents. Talk about that. Yeah. So they'll give me some ideas. Or my daughter will say, mom, you need more hype. <laughs> <laughs> that last one was a little low energy. Hype it up. So how old are your kids? My daughter's going to be eight soon. And my son will be six next month. So oh my god, I have, yeah. I have a two and a half year old and a seven month and I just can't believe how fast it goes. It sure does. Once they start school, it just starts flying. So and it's good having them to tell you all of the the tech and social media tips. That's so funny. Yeah, I'm like, can you take over my social media account? <laughs> I'm just waiting. Just a little bit older. And then you can start managing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll be your allowance. <laughs> yeah. No, that's amazing. And so for for me, what I've it's definitely evolved. I just started I left big law in 2020 after having my son two months early. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I just, it was commuting three hours a day in the city to into Manhattan. And I realized I, I don't, I it wasn't sustainable. It wasn't really sustainable to continue doing that. And I didn't really want to move back into the city. So I found a firm where I could work a hundred percent remote oh, and wow. I had my first son then I, we just did it back to back. So we have our second son and it's been really, um, Instagram video, uh, outreach on LinkedIn for my existing network has been fundamental. Like, I don't think I would have, uh, if I just sat and waited for the phone to ring, right. it wouldn't have uh, been good. So can you talk about a little bit about your like business development through social media? Yep. So definitely connecting in my line of business, you know, you definitely want to connect with medical providers. They're the first line of defense of people who treat your potential clients, you know, because they come to the doctor, if they have had an accident or been injured or whatever. And so, you know, connecting with different chiropractors or primary care doctors, what have you has been super fundamental because they'll see your videos or see your, your, they will see your content. And then it's almost like, they're interviewing you through that. And so yeah. it's like, yeah, I can work with her. I want to work with her. She obviously, you know, seems like she knows what she's doing and hopefully it would be fun to work with too, because, you know, it's one component to know the area that you're practicing in. But, you know, sometimes I wouldn't want to work with someone if they weren't very personable, nice, you know, customer service based, et cetera. So it has been really nice to reach out to um, and connect with different medical providers um, people, you know, that maybe I even went to high school with, they'll follow and they'll be like, Oh my gosh, I was in an accident. Like, you know, I know you do this area of law or I have a friend or whatever. So it definitely gives you a platform, um, to have people be aware of what you provide in terms of a service. So, yeah, it's, it was intimidating for me at first, but then I, I was like, you know, it's either I make money or I don't, and we have a kid on the way, <laughs> yeah. or a kid born. But um, I've started to realize that the, the the point of where attorneys and the industry accepts it and it's the norm, yeah, it's going to be super crowded. For sure. <laughs> So now is the time to like kind of get in and just go all in with it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You kind of have to put that fear aside. There was definitely a fear component for me. Like you're putting yourself out there, you know, people can watch you 24 seven if they want, you know, you like pick yourself apart. I said this wrong, my voice, blah, blah, all that. I don't stuff. even care. You either. just have to, huh? I don't even care. Like I, there, there's typo. There was, there was like a couple typos. I, I just have embraced the like TikTok style, which it's like okay, there's no um, auto correction. Um, there's type. There's been typos in them. Um, I mispronounced a celebrity name, and that one went like hella viral because of it. There you go. I'll take what I can. It's okay. <laughs> That's it. You just have to throw that, you know, out the window, not worry about it and just 
product over perfection is what I always say. So yeah, and and that's what I really like because of course, you know, as lawyers, we're we have to be meticulous when you're doing legal legal briefs, of course. Um, but I think a part of it is that element stops a lot of lawyers they're so afraid of saying something wrong or being misinterpreted um and i mean reels are only 30 60 seconds long so how do you you know how do you balance that um giving giving legal information in short form um is that kind of like a challenge for you it has been, but I think it has gotten better. So like when I said we would shoot for four hours, that was when we initially started. And it was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, take this for 60 seconds or 45 seconds, you know. And then my video person was like, no, like no one's going to be paying attention that long. So I told myself that my job is to get the information out in a snippet form and in a synthesized form, and I can elaborate in the caption in a follow-up video, or they can call or DM or whatever. I can't explain the entire law book in 20, 30 seconds. So I've just told myself that and try to condense it in shorter spurts as we've gone on, so. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's what we have to do. And the more of us in the industry doing it, I, it's the norm. But when I first started in 2020, I had someone, another lawyer who like went in on one of my posts and was like, but you didn't talk about this and you didn't talk about this. And what if this? And I was like, okay, this is a 30 second video. This is not a legal memo. You're like, <laughs> Try it. <laughs> you do it. And this person <laughs> didn't make any of her own videos. She yeah. was, she was, she honestly was a troll. I ended up blocking her because it was just like so negative. Um, but, and I also don't read any of the comments on my TikToks anymore. Do you, do you use TikTok? I do use TikTok. I, in, I try to engage with, you know, any follower. I feel like if you have a troll, you've made it. So congratulations. <laughs> Some of my videos have gone crazy viral. Um, they're all about the Kardashians. TikTok's obsessed with Kardashians. And I'm seeing that people are like, they're fighting in the comments. And oh, yeah. And then they're picking apart it from like a legal and, that, like, and it's not right. Like, you know, these are just people like, but it's it's so interesting it's fascinating tiktok is a different beast from from instagram but i for think sure. using both is important for sure i feel like tiktok is much more raw it's like no holds bar like people are just ready to go in and it's interesting like the posts that you don't think are going to generate that much commentary do and then all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh like I never even expected that post to be so controversial or interesting or whatever and you know people are just commenting commenting and it goes on and on and it's like okay that's, that's cool <laughs> yeah I guess that's what it the point is just to to um spark engagement absolutely and the dialogue and people to feel comfortable to ask questions or what about this or this happened to me or whatever it definitely does, which is nice. So, so if someone co contacts you on Instagram, um, walk us through. What does that typically look like? Do you do a do you do a consult call? Um, yeah. Explain that to us. Absolutely. Sometimes they'll give me like a whole you know recitation of what their legal question is, and then I can you know determine based on that if they have a case or they don't. Other times they'll just be like very minimal, like hey, my name is such and such, and my phone number is this. I really want to consult with you and talk to you about an injury of mine or my family members or whatever. So, um, you know, we're amicable to anything. We tell people they can call us, text us, DM us on any social media platform, and we're willing to meet with them um, and talk about their case. So, because personal injury attorneys give free cons consultations. So, <laughs> one of the plus sides. And DMs, um, sorry, not DMs. Um, are you contingency based? We are contingency based, so that's nice too. And I think that the law did that on purpose, knowing that if someone is injured, they obviously are already suffering a ton of losses. You know, their car is likely damaged, they're in an accident, they're hurt. Um, they might be suffering wage loss because 
they're hurt, they can't go to work or whatever. So the law did that on purpose because having someone have to cough up a retainer to talk to a personal injury attorney, they would likely never pursue a personal injury claim. And so the billion dollar insurance industry would always win. So this is an opportunity for injured people, victims of any injury, to be able to seek representation, not have to front the money, knowing that if they have a case and money is won, then they can pay their attorney from that settlement. If no monies are won, the attorney can expend all the time, all the resources, all the costs, and not recoup anything. So it's super important to really vet the case and make sure there's merit there before you take it on, because you don't want to be spinning your wheels forever, only to find out that it's not a good case. But you know, once you've done this you know. so many times, you can tell. So. Yeah. No, um, that's awesome. Uh, or I think so. I think you know Lawyer Britt and Tally. Yeah, I met her at the CEO Lawyer Summit last December, and she is so inspirational yeah. online and so sweet in person. She's awesome. She, yeah. um, she's a good friend of mine through through social. But I, I think one of the best things I learned from her was procedures and efficiencies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that was this year we just like I literally have documents of just start to finish on how to run my practice yep. so yep that's super important she talks about it a lot on her podcast on her pages that she runs social media content on and I think it is because if you're providing customer service to your client base, you want to make sure that they are treated the same way, despite being a different person, different case, whatever. And if you handle it the same way, beginning, middle and end, they get the you know same feeling, the same warm and fuzzies, and it's efficient and informative and you're not missing any steps. So I think she's right on with that. Yeah, and it's, you know, I know we're not, running a hamburger franchise but I do try to think about that sometimes you know growing and scaling that's really the only way to do it and a lot of lawyers I who I've worked with were under you know as an associate I've worked with a lot of lawyers through the different firms I've worked at and you see the people who cannot let go and don't know how to really delegate work because they believe that they're the only ones that know how to do something. And it's, I, I now I, as I'm running my own business, I'm like, wow, well, that's so limiting. Like they're completely cutting off uh, any potential expansion. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think you're right on that. And I agree. And it's really important that you do hire people that you think are a competent that have that same business model in mind. And, and you know, I always look for someone who cares about the firm as much as I do, who cares about the clients as much as I do. You know, we don't treat our clients like just a number and, you know, associate them that way. Uh, we wanna make sure that they really feel cared for because they're in a vulnerable spot. So, yeah. you know, that's super important. But yeah, you've gotta delegate. If you don't delegate, you will never grow. And so you just have to find people that you trust uh, to do the work and to do the work correctly. So I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> so Gordy, we're coming up to the end. Uh, before we wrap up, is there one, um, I usually tailor this question. So tell us one point of advice for another law professional who is maybe watching this, who hasn't really started embracing social yet for their business. My advice to be to them would be to start small. So maybe, you know, it seems so overwhelming because if you think about all the platforms you can post on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, you know, Twitter, whatever, if you think of it that way, it's super overwhelming. So maybe pick one that you, you feel comfortable with and post on that and just start with that and utilize that content to go on another platform and then start posting on that platform as well. And so if you take it in little chunks, I think it becomes more manageable than if you try to do like all five or six at once, it becomes very overwhelming. So that would be my word of advice. That's a great tip. It really is um, a, a great tip. Just take it, start small, start with where you are, where you feel like your community, your, your people are, even if that's LinkedIn, LinkedIn's pretty cool right now. 
Um, yeah. And that's where you're going to get those professional referrals. People who are attorneys as well that don't practice your area, but are willing to refer business your way because they see you, they see your posts, they have clients that'll turn to them, a client base already that'll turn to them and say, oh, I just, you know, have this happen to me. Who can I call? And you might be that person that they refer business to. So. No, it's a great tip. I love that. And thank you so much, Gordy, for coming on and, um, Thank if, you. If people want to reach out to you, what's the best way? They can DM on Instagram. They can DM on TikTok, Facebook, email us, uh, call. Uh, we're, we're accessible. And all of our information is on our social media platforms to make it really easy for people. Like, you know, we've got our contact form directly, a link in our profile on Instagram that will take us to the contact form. And so we're accessible in a multitude of ways. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. And thank you everyone for watching. This is another thank Google you. Highlight. We're here every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Gordy, I hope you come back. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Okay, have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you all next week. You too. Bye. Bye.